everybody, it's Dr. Joe, and today I'm going to show you my top seven advanced balance exercises. So let's get started. Disclaimer alert! Disclaimer alert! So for these balance exercises, I'm going to use a half foam roll. Well, what if you don't have a half foam roll? Yeah! You can just cut a foam roll in half. But if you don't want to do that either, you can just roll up a big like beach towel and that should give you enough to work with, but it probably won't be quite the same as this. So if you can get access to a half foam roll, I really recommend it. We're going to use both sides of the half foam roll, which is neat because it's going to strengthen in different ways for those balance exercises. So you're going to, I call this flat in down and flat in up. So we're gonna start with the flat end down. I usually find this way a little bit easier. Um, it's a little bit different for everybody. Uh, people always ask, shoes on, shoes off. I have my shoes off. I feel like it's harder with your shoes off because if you have your shoes on, the soles of the shoes give you a little more balance. So as you can see right now, my ankles are already working. So this strengthens your ankles, it strengthens your knees, and it strengthens your hips. All of those muscles have to do with your balancer muscles. So it's important to strengthen all those and balance exercises strengthen all of them. So what you're gonna do is just start off by putting your feet close together. We call this the Romberg position. So all you're gonna do is just try and stay on the foam roll. You don't want your toes going forward and touching like this, and you don't want your heels going back and touching on the other side. You really want to kind of stay on top of that foam roll. You can see I'm moving around. That's what's going to happen when you're balancing. It's normal. If you feel like you're swaying a lot, make sure you try this first with something to hold on to like a countertop or have someone next to you just in case you feel very unbalanced. So I just start off with 10 to 15 seconds and work your way up from there. And then after that, you're going to roll it over. So as you can see, less of a surface on the bottom. So it's going to be harder to balance on. So I all, that's why I always do flat and down first and then flat and up. So same thing, you're going to kind of get into that Romberg position. You can see here, I got to get going, feet close together and then you're just going to balance. So you can see that my feet are working a little bit more because of that uneven surface on the bottom. And so this is okay. If I rock a little bit, that's fine. If I have to touch a little bit with my toes, that's okay. But try not to just give up. Really try and use those ankles, those knees, those hip muscles to work on that balance. And again, if you have to hold on to something just a little bit, that's fine, you can do that, no big deal. So again, 10 to 15 seconds to start off with, your goal would be to work up to a minute and have that easy to do. So after you do the Romberg, then you're gonna flip it back over, start with the flat end back down, and you're gonna do a tandem stance. I'm gonna do a little bit of an angle so you can see it. So tandem is basically just one foot in front of the other. My foot's gonna hang off just a little bit, in actuality, if you had something a little bit longer, that would work better. But you're basically just like you're trying to stand on a tightrope. So I tell people it's easiest to find a spot in front of you and focus on it. If, if you're feeling like you're wobbling all over the place, if you've got a picture on the wall or a light switch on the wall, look at that and focus on that. And that usually helps with your balance. Make sure that you're switching feet. So you know, if your left one's in the front, then switch so your left one's in the back because that works your muscles in different ways, having the one in the front and the one in the back. So again, you can see I focus, if I'm focusing forwards, I get a little bit better balance than when I'm looking at the camera. So just again, trying to keep that balance. If you're wobbling, that's completely normal. That's just those muscles trying to find that balance. And then you're gonna flip it over. So again, a little bit harder trying to find that balance, just that one foot in front of the other. So again, looking straight ahead, if you need to use your arms for balancers a little bit, that's fine. Usually more of the weight goes into the back foot, not always, but that's what I found that most of the time your back leg is doing most of the balancing. So that's why it's important to switch after that 10 to 15 seconds or whatever time you're up to. And then just, again, keeping that balance, trying to find that focus and trying to wobble as little as possible. And if you know you need to put your arms out like that, you can, you don't have to, you can put them by your side and get those muscles a little bit stronger. So then the next one is just gonna be 
going back to standing on it. This time it doesn't have to be the Romberg. You're just kind of standing with your feet about shoulder width apart. You're going to clasp your hands in front of you and just at your upper body. So try and keep your hips level. Your hips aren't going with you. Just with your upper body, you're going to kind of rotate back and forth. So what this does is it just changes the movement. So now I have more weight on this side. Now I have more weight on this side. So starting off with just your hands should be fine. Um, if this becomes easy, you can hold a little weight, um, five pounds, working your way up to 10 pounds, and then just going back and forth, trying to do the balance like that. And then same thing, then you just flip it over, find your balance first, which is sometimes takes a second or two. And then once you find that balance, hands out in front, just rotating, try and keep those hips pretty straightforward as you rotate back and forth. So again, you can do this as a timed, you can just do 10 to 15 seconds, or you can say, I'm gonna rotate five times on each side kind of thing, and then work your way up from there. So now we're gonna start getting a little bit harder, um, but not too hard. So now you're gonna go into doing a squat on the foam roll. And so again, this one, this one will work. It's about shoulder width apart. If you're having a little bit of balance issues, if you have maybe two more inches on the end so you can get a little bit wider base of support, that's fine. Just make sure it's at least shoulder width apart. So once you get that balance, then you're just gonna go into a squat and then come back up. Still following all the same concepts with a good proper squat, stick your booty back, keep your knees behind your toes, keep your back straight. Going into that squat, if you need to use your hands as a balancer, you can, and just go nice and slow and controlled. So, you know, squatting down, you see those muscles working, and then coming back up. So you don't have to go far, but just make sure you're trying to control it as much as you can. And then same thing, flipping it over, getting that balance first, see, make sure you get the balance first before you go into the exercise, and then, Squatting, whoa, squatting down, there you go, and squatting back up. So you see, I'm doing a little bit less of a squat because this one's a little tougher for me. So I just kind of reset myself, get that good squat, and then come back up. So again, maybe just starting with five of these. You don't want to overdo it because you can see how much my legs are working, how much it's wobbling. All those muscles, those stabilizer muscles are working hard to make sure that I don't fall over. So it's a lot more work than you think it is. So after you master the squat, you're gonna add on to the squat. So for this one, you're getting some upper body movement as well. So what I'm gonna do is once I find my balance, I'm gonna go into a squat and then reach down towards the opposite knee. So I'm gonna go into the squat, kind of, or, or your shin, whichever way you wanna go, and then squat down and just touch the opposite side. So again, I'm shifting weight to one side, the other side, and that's what's gonna make it a little bit harder. So again, whoa, there you go. Don't feel like you have to do a lot. You can do two on each side and then go from there. And then flip it over. Find that balance. This one's gonna be a little bit harder. And then once you get that balance, which I haven't gotten yet, once you get that balance, then you're gonna go into the squat, touch the opposite side, up, and then squatting down. And so see, you can reset yourself. You know, if you feel like you're gonna fall, reset yourself, catch your, catch your balance, and then start back over. So if you have to step off, that, that's fine. But if you don't need to, if you can reset yourself, that's good. And then coming down and then coming back up. So see, they're getting harder and harder. So if you're not ready for that, if you can't do the regular squat, don't try the rest of these. Make sure you master each one first and then keep on going. So then you're gonna go into some single leg balance. So again, it's getting harder. If you can't get the other ones down, you're probably not gonna be ready for a single leg. So first, usually what I do is I keep the other one down until I can find a good spot for my foot. And then slowly 
just lift it up for the balance. So same thing, if you can find something on your wall, I'm looking off towards my wall, focusing on a specific spot, that's usually gonna help with the balance. So a lot of times people wanna look at their feet, but that's gonna make it a little bit harder. So make sure you're doing both sides for the single leg, um, sides and each leg. And then once you master one, then you can go to the other one. And so again, you know, just trying to get 10 to 15 seconds to start off with. You don't have to lock out your knee. You can have a little bit of a bend in your knee. Sometimes that helps and you don't want to end up irritating your knee. So if you want to unlock it just a little bit, that's fine. And then so the last one, still kind of doing a balance. I'm turning it this time. So my foot is long wise, long wise, long ways. And then you're just going to do a hip flexion. So you're balancing and now you're just bringing that leg forward. So I'm not kicking far. I'm keeping my upper body upright, just like in a regular hip flexion, pulling my toes up to kind of lock out those muscles, but I'm, I'm feeling more of the work here. So that's why you want to do both sides because you're working them in different ways. So again, even if you just want to start with three on one side and then switch and then do three on the other side, because now I'm doing the stabilizers on this hip, whoa, and then doing the hip flexor on this side. So again, it doesn't have to be a whole lot, but that's just getting some movement in there, some dynamic movement to make those muscles work harder. Well, there you go. Those were my top seven advanced balance exercises. If you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click on the link up here. And don't forget to subscribe by clicking down there. Remember, be safe, try not to fall off. Have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.